Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, and welcome to SDC, the NBA talk show. We talk about everything that went on in the NBA from the previous day. We do have a little bit to talk about and some pretty good news, so let's hop right into it. To kick off the news, five-time NBA All-Star Blake Griffin may not be helping out the Los Angeles Clippers in the first round series against the Utah Jazz because he is out due to a big toe injury, but... That being said, that does not mean that the Clippers aren't expecting him to help in playoff runs to come in the future. Yes, Blake Griffin will be an unrestricted free agent this offseason. However, he has expressed his interest in remaining with the Clippers in the past. And now it seems as if the feelings are mutual. As the report came out yesterday claiming that the Los Angeles Clippers are committed to re-signing Blake Griffin this offseason. Which is kind of bad news for any of those OKC fan hopefuls that were hoping Blake Griffin will come home to help out Russell Westbrook next year. The Portland Trailblazers have had a very up and down year. They started off the season as one of the most disappointing teams in the NBA. Then they traded for Yusuf Nurkic at the trade deadline and all of a sudden they are one of the hottest teams in the NBA or were one of the hottest teams in the NBA because as we know their series just came to an end against the Golden State Warriors. But that only means that they can now get a head start on the offseason. As CJ McCollum took note of that as he has already begun the Portland Trailblazers recruiting process. As of yesterday, CJ McCollum did a Q&A on Twitter and someone asked him who he would like to see the Blazers go after this offseason. And CJ simply replied by tweeting at Paul George. Take this with a grain of salt. There is no PG-13 to Portland confirmed or anything like that. But it's just simply CJ saying that he would like to see Paul George on the Blazers. Nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't mean that Paul George is going to end up as a Portland Trailblazer. That being said though, a core of CJ McCollum Damian Lillard, Yusuf Nurkic, and Paul George would be deadly out west. Whether or not Portland has the assets to pull off a trade to get Paul George is another question. The most bittersweet story in the NBA this year has to have been the Miami Heat and their miraculous turnaround during the second half of the season where they went from being a lottery bound team to playing like one of the best teams in the NBA. And I say bittersweet because they were playing great. They deserve to be in the playoffs, but because of some bad tiebreakers, they wound up on the outside looking in, which of course is going to lead us to wonder what if the Miami Heat got into the playoffs? How would they have fared against the Boston Celtics or the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now we will never find out the answer to how they would have fared, but one thing we know for sure is that Dion Waiters would have been snapping in the playoffs. As that's what he said yesterday during an IG live session. I like my chance, I'm telling you, bro. No matter. I like the chances, bro. Like we was we were scary. We were a scary Continue team, on. man. Continue on. Nobody wanted to see us, man. I'm gonna keep saying it, yeah. I've been snapping in the playoffs right now, you hear me? I've been in my bag. I was I would have been in my bag. He, you know what I'm saying? I've been like them playoffs right now, I'll be looking, I ain't gonna lie, I'll be looking at them playoffs I'll be like I can't even really watch the playoffs. Like, it's so frustrating because I know we supposed to be in there. Cause I know what the stuff we'd have been doing. We'd have been bumping. You know what I'm saying? I can't watch it. It would have been great to see Dion Waiters in the playoffs, but unfortunately, he went down with an untimely ankle injury, which most likely cost Miami Heat their spot in the playoffs. So I guess we'll have to wait until next year to see Dion Waiters snap in the playoffs. Another playoff series came to an end last night, as with the 92 to 89 win, despite almost blowing a 25 point lead that they had at one point in time, the Toronto Raptors are now the second team in the East to secure their spot in the conference semifinals and are set to face off against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And in this series, neither team shied away whatsoever from the chance of taking a shot at the other team. One of the best, of course, was the Bucks introducing the Raptors to the Barney theme song in game three. But that being said, there is no better laugh than the last laugh. And of course, the Raptors had the last laugh yesterday as they troll the Bucks by releasing this video on their Twitter after the game.
Now, I did go to rapsand6.com after seeing that video, and it was just the same video playing over and over again in a loop. For the game, though, DeMar DeRozan was murder as usual with 32 points and 5 steals, and same could be said for Giannis, as he had another monster game of 34 points and 9 rebounds. And I just want to say real quick, if you are a Bucks fan, keep your head up. Most people didn't even have this team making the playoffs this year, especially once Jabari Parker went down halfway through the season. So to be able to get to where you got with what you had is a real accomplishment. And I wouldn't expect another first round exit for a while from this team. And yet another series came to an end last night as well. A surprisingly good series too. Well, the last four games, it was the first two games which kind of gave the illusion this one would be a pretty easy win for the Spurs. And I'd say the best news for the Spurs fans, other than of course knowing that your team will now advance to the semifinals, is knowing that Tony Parker was actually saving everything he had for the playoffs. During the regular season, Tony looked like he had nothing left. It wasn't pretty. But during their first round matchup against Memphis, he looked like vintage Tony Parker, especially last night as he had 27 points on 11 of 14 shooting from the field. You know, Parker was great, but in the eyes of Greg Popovich, there is no player in the NBA that is better than Kawhi Leonard. As after the game, he said that Kawhi Leonard is the best player in the NBA. And obviously Kawhi Leonard is, you know, in my opinion, the, the, the best player in the league right now. Now that's not the most outlandish claim. Some people will agree, others will say the title still belongs to LeBron, but I can say for sure that he is the best two-way player in the NBA. Kawhi had 29 points last night. Mike Conley though, isn't too bad of a player either. He had one heck of a series. He finished with 26 points from Memphis and 103 to 96 was the final score. And that wraps up all the action for the day 13 recap of the 2017 NBA playoffs. And now it's time to get into the player of the day. Yesterday, you guys selected John Wall and his 20 points, 14 assists and six rebounds as your player of the day. And here are today's nominees. You have Tony Parker and his 27 points, 11 of 14 shooting. Kawhi Leonard and his 29 points and nine rebounds or DeMar DeRozan and his 32 points and five steals. As always, you guys can go vote for the player of the day by following the straw poll link down in the description box below. But other than that, thank you once again for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on and subscribe to stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA. And until tomorrow, keep getting the bucks team SDC and I'm out of here. Peace!